I wanted to do a quick video to go over a few of the cadaver hoops I just dehydrated and processed. Um, for me, this is an incredible learning experience that I can share with you guys. Um, this hoof in front of us here belonged to my rescue pony, Ruby. She was in her 30s. Um, we rescued her from a pretty rough situation. She was emaciated and had long, um, overgrown, foundered hooves. She also had undiagnosed Cushing's that hadn't been treated. And so we treated her for just about three years. We did the best we could, but ultimately um, we ended up putting her down because she was uh, always in pain. She had chronic laminitis. We just couldn't get a handle on the Cushing's um, and she just wasn't doing very well. So it wasn't in her best interest to keep going. Um, so what you can see on this hoof here is if you look at the upper growth just here by the coronary band, you can see, it's hard to tell from that angle, I'm not sure what, that's probably a better angle there. You can see that it's steeper right here and then kind of along this ring it starts to come and flare outward. Again there's another deviation and angle about here and it flares further. And then of course you can see the ridge along here where we rasped the leverage off from the top. Um, due to her metabolic condition, Ruby just could not maintain hoof wall connection. It would get this far down and then tear away no matter how short we kept the toes, whether we kept her booted or casted, um, regardless of her diet. Metabolically, she just couldn't maintain that hoof wall connection. Um, and the implications of being foundered for years and having that um, PPID untreated you know, she's got a significant amount of bone loss. There was only so much we could do. The soft tissue inside the hoof was also severely damaged. When you're looking at the front, you can see the tight growth flares through here. Here you can see we've rasped right through the hoof wall and we've exposed what we call the lamellar wedge here. So when this hoof wall is torn away from the coffin bone inside and the lamina is separated, you can't just have a big void there. So the hoof, secretes, I like to think about it this way, it's not entirely like this, but I like to think about it like a liquid keratin. The cells that form the white line, which is the same type of keratin, rapidly secrete um, keratin to fill the void as it's tearing. So there's never an empty space that suddenly gets filled. As it tears, this keratin is secreted and fills the void. That's our lamellar wedge. And so the more separated the hoof wall, the thicker the wedge. It fills this void. It's the same type of keratin um, as the hoof wall, but it's less dense and less firm and a lot, uh, a lot weaker with more moisture. So it's not ideal to have this type of material in the hoof. It's undermining the connection of the hoof wall. If we look at the before trim here, I mean, and this was well managed. We were trimming Ruby every four weeks, trying to keep her as comfortable as we could. Um, you know, the heel is back underneath the hoof. The toe is almost coming down at the proper angle that it would have been if it were connected, not quite. Um, I didn't have x-rays for Ruby, so this is about as aggressive as I go on something that I don't have x-rays for. If we look at the trimmed side, you can see that the heel has still been brought back as far as we can and we've taken off as much of this leverage at the toe as we could and I've tried to hold my rasp to mimic the angle of this upper growth as we come down. So you can see how much leverage was reduced if we compare it to the untrimmed side. That's as aggressive as I can possibly be without a radiograph guiding me because we, you never know the conformation inside of that coffin bone and how deformed it is and remodeled. Now, in this particular case, what I love about these cadavers is we can now make our assessment, flip it over and have a look. Um, if only we could do that on all the horses we trim. Let's have a look at the bottom first. Um, we'll start this way. And it's hard to tell because obviously the hoof is split. Um, but she has uniform concavity all the way up to here where I've placed my bevel. Um, Ruby had a thin sole, constantly bruised and weak. I actually kept her booted. She had a pair of cloud boots that she wore most of the time. Um, incidentally, she was actually more comfortable um, in the springtime when most horses have laminitis and those issues. And for her, the issue was in the fall when the ACTH hormone 
um, is elevated um, with her PPID, that's when things usually got the best of her. And she'd have chronic laminitis. She'd be lying down all the time. The boots and the pads at the, in the clouds didn't help. So that was kind of how we established that it was the end of the road for her. Just more, more bad days than more good days. So now let's take a look inside. Let's look, which side here? Let's look at the untrimmed side first. So you can see how that hoof wall is completely deviated from the coffin bone. If you look, hang on, let me get the right angle here. So if you look here, this hoof wall here should be completely parallel to this coffin bone. It should have a nice tight lamellar connection. And so for comparison purposes, let me grab a healthy hoof here. Okay, so look at the connection in this hoof. The coffin bone and the hoof wall are completely parallel and there's a tight, um, tight connection between them. And so then we compare it back to Ruby's. This lamellar wedge in here is what we were talking about. So this is the wedge right in here. And you can see it actually grows, whoop, it actually grows down here into her white line or golden line, whatever you want to call it. And her coffin bone as well is what we call ski tipped or remodeled in that the, the bottom edge of it here has been eroded away. Again, if we compare her to the healthier hoof, look at the sharp point on that coffin bone and how it comes down in that triangular fashion compared to Ruby's where it's all rounded off on the bottom. And you can see the thickness, the thickness of her sole here um, is pretty thin. And I never trimmed sole on Ruby. She didn't have enough sole for me to even think about trimming it. So the only time I would have touched it with a knife is if there was a lump or a bump, um, but not to thin it out, make it pretty. I would never take off that exfoliating layer on a horse like this that doesn't have enough sole. It's entirely different on a horse that has a thick sole with lots of exfoliation. You can clean that up and you can trim that a bit. But on this horse, she never had enough, so it wasn't something we trimmed. So I just wanted to add this. Um, you know, it's not often we get to see them all the way through to this point, um, but we gave Ruby the best life we could and she gets to live on now with this model, teaching other people and clients and horse owners and students so that you can learn um, exactly why it's so important to manage these chronically foundered horses or the PPID horses. And if we had gotten Ruby before we did, I mean, we got her when she was in her late twenties, um, you know, if we had gotten her in her teens, we probably could have corrected a lot of this. Now we couldn't reverse any bone damage that would have been done at that point but it would have been, it didn't need to be this bad. She didn't have to um, get to the point that she did. But I hope that was helpful um, and somewhat educational. Uh, for more about Ruby, you can check out her blog post on our website. I'll put the link uh, along with this post.